Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am so happy you are here uh, with me again today. And today I have two wonderful, I call them cowgirls because they're gonna <laughs> teach us a little bit about regenerative farming because they're gonna be a guest on my Protecting Your Nest podcast. And we're gonna talk about that, ranching and other issues related to how we can sustain our beautiful environment. One of the things though that uh, Tara and Natalie uh, what you know, I would love to hear them talk about is since they're female, why so many women are afraid of having protein in their diet. And I think that's a mistake, but sometimes you got to hear from somebody else who fully understands why that's important. So ladies, do me a favor. Uh, let's, let's convince some of the ladies out there who will check out this video why it's important that they have adequate protein in their diet. I love this question and I'm happy to lend, you know, my personal opinion to it. It's something I've actually been focusing pretty heavily on within the last year is really increasing my protein, you know, my animal protein and, and just really paying attention to it. You know, I've grown up on an animal protein diet as a rancher and rancher's daughter for a long time, but I was very fluid with it. And so now paying attention to it and being, you know, very intentional about meeting, you know, certain grams throughout the day, um, I think it's made a really big impact on, you know, my health and my body. I will say that one of my biggest concerns moving, you know, into age and later life is really bringing that muscle mass that I have now with me. You know, it's not easy to build muscle muscle mass later on. And I think we're starting to realize how important that is for aging. And me as a woman, I want to make sure, you know, that I really carry some with me. And so that protein is going to be really good at that. And then the other thing I think is really great about protein and why I'd recommend it for women is satiety. So, you know, not a lot of us are looking to increase our caloric consumption, but a lot of us do want to eat and we do want to feel full and feel good. And so that's where protein really comes in. You know, for me, it's starting the day with protein. I always start with meat and eggs. And I feel like that has really made a drastic difference on my habits throughout the rest of the day for eating, whether that be snacking or, you know, eating multiple meals or however that looks. I just feel like I do a better job of eating healthier when I start my day off with a really strong animal protein diet. All right, I'll jump in here. Natalie took a lot of my points, but I've got a few more to add. Um, I actually heard a quote at the beginning of the year, statistics about women falling in older age and, you know, not being able to walk again or breaking a leg or a hip and like just, you know, bone degeneration with age. And when I started kind of diving into this, similar to Natalie, it really led me down the, the rabbit hole of consuming more protein at every single meal. So my goal has been 30 grams of protein at every meal with at least 10 grams twice a day for a snack. Um, and again, I have been trying to kind of watch my weight. I've actually been on kind of a, you know, just a weight conscious journey. I don't want to say weight loss, but just really making sure I'm eating well. And a big part of that has been that protein. Um, I am way less likely to snack as Natalie kind of said, if I've had that protein. So I love starting my day truly with, um, actually a high protein milk drink, like almost a meal replacer that I can have on the go. I grab it every single day and it gives me those 30 grams that I'm looking to hit first thing in the morning. Um, I also have been incorporating a lot more weightlifting into my routine. I feel like I was probably guilty of being heavy in the cardio and heavy in the yoga for a lot of years. And um, weightlifting has been a new thing to add to my routine. And I just find that I need more protein in order to really feel like I can get out there and lift those weights. And it goes back to, you know, protecting those bones. If we have more muscle mass around our bones, you know, just protecting our overall health there and having that protein. Um, you know, one of the great things, I'm a dairy farmer. So one of the great things about milk, it can be a really great recovery drink. Um, and so when I have that morning workout and then kicking off with those 30 grams of milk based, uh, animal, you know, protein in the morning, similar to Natalie, it just starts you off on such a great foot for the rest of the day. Yeah. Uh, both, uh, of your comments were great. And if I were to summarize them starting, with the muscle mass uh, question. I know in my clinic, I have a lot of seniors and they absolutely need muscle mass. In fact, one of the things I do with my seniors is I ask them to attempt to squeeze their quads. And usually I feel nothing when they <laughs> attempt to do it. And my goal is when they come back that they actually have some muscle there. So when they squeeze, I can uh, feel it. I also have learned uh, through various uh, readings and uh, studies that of the things that determine longevity, uh, your muscle mass is probably, if not the number one thing, is in the top five for sure. So that's really important. Many people fall because they don't have muscle mass, and that's really important. Ironically, right before my recording, uh, I had a chance to check out 
uh, the diet doctor on Sean Baker's uh, podcast talking about satiety. And as you may know, they're creating a, uh, I think it's called Hava, but they're creating a completely different platform in addition to the low carb platform where they talk about satiety. And of the things that give you satiety, protein is always at the top of the list. So for those people out there struggling with their diet, they should absolutely consider protein as the uh, go-to. And then of course, uh, when you're, uh, you know, uh, eating, I tell my patients to start the protein ingestion first, because if you start there, you'll probably get full and then you got to slow down, you know, we eat too fast and, and, and give your body time for those uh, leptin hormones and the stretch receptors in your stomach to actually get activated so you can get full. And of course, if you're at the gym, get off the treadmill and lift some weights because lifting weights is very important, but you're not going to build muscle without protein. So all of those talking points make a lot of sense to me. And I appreciate all of that, but I really appreciate even further that you guys are going to be on my podcast. So for those who are checking out this video short, make sure to check out the podcast episode where my guests are going to be present. I'll make sure to have a link in the notes and I appreciate you coming to this video. And until the next video, where we'll talk about other health-related topics, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.